What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Dan Terry Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Thursday, September 19th, 2019, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash entertainmentreport with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Daniel Craig is the detective searching for the truth behind a mysterious murder in the newest trailer for Knives Out. The clip released on Wednesday features Craig as Detective Benoit Blanc, who is on the case after famous crime author Harlan Thromby, played by Christopher Plummer, is found dead at his home shortly after his 85th birthday. The actor's dysfunctional family and staff were present at his birthday, making everyone a a suspect. Craig must thoroughly investigate everyone and see through their lies, as he suspects foul play despite the initial ruling of suicide. The suspects, who have also gathered to hear the author's will, are portrayed by an all-star cast that includes Jamie Lee Curtis, Chris Evans, Don Johnson, Michael Shannon, Tony Collette, Anna de Armos, and Catherine Langford. Craig says the family is truly desperate. When people get desperate, the knives come out. This is a twisted web, and we are not finished untangling. Knives Out from writer and director Ryan Johnson is set to arrive in theaters on November 27th. Peter Weber, also known as Pilot Pete, has been announced as the next Bachelor who will headline Season 24 of the long-running reality series. Weber was introduced as a new Bachelor during the Bachelor in Paradise Season 6 finale. He was then sworn in on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Kimmel had had Weber place his hand on a copy of People magazine while raising his right hand. The late-night host asked him a series of questions that poked fun um, at the Bachelor series. Uh, Kimmel asked Weber... Do you promise to get choked up when you have to make your final choice between two dental hygienists? With Weber replying, I do. Weber previously appeared on season 15 of The Bachelorette, featuring Hannah Brown, where he came in third place. He famously had a romantic night with Brown inside of a windmill. Weber is a captain for a major commercial airline and is a native of Westlake Village, California. He comes after last season's Bachelor, Colton Underwood, ended season 23 by choosing Cassie Randolph. However, the couple did not get engaged. Bachelor in Paradise is Chris and Katie. Dylan and Hannah and Demi and Christian got engaged on the season 6 finale. A related story, Rachel Lindsay says she's bored with the Bachelor's largely white cast. The 34-year-old television personality reacted to Peter Weber being named the next Bachelor over Mike Johnson during Wednesday's episode of her Bachelor Happy Hour with Rachel and Ali Podcasts. As he says, I think Peter seems like a sweet guy. I'm not saying he won't be a great bachelor, but I have to say that I'll be watching this season through a lens of sadness. ABC announced Tuesday that Weber will star in The Bachelor Season 24. Um, Johnson, who was a contestant with Weber on the Hannah Brown's season of The Bachelorette, would have been the first African-American bachelor. As he herself was the first African-American bachelorette, starring in season 13 in 2017. She expressed her frustration with Weber's casting and the franchise as a whole. Lindsay says Mike Johnson would have been the Bachelor of season 24, period. It's time. It's bigger than a Peter. We have seen so many seasons of Peter. I just feel like now's the time for something different. She added, I feel like there's a bigger problem here. There's a bigger issue. In 2019, it, it disappoints me that the Bachelor franchise does not reflect reality. It's not reflective of what the real world looks like or what real life relationships look like. Lindsay says she's bored with the franchise's um, homogeneous cast and feeling less excited to watch the new season. She says, to be honest, I'm bored. I'm not necessarily bored with the drama, but I'm bored with the cast and I'm bored with the way they look. I'm sorry, vanilla is not the only flavor of dessert that's out there. Flavor of dessert. White is not the only color in the crayon box. But when you watch Bachelor Nation or Bachelor Franchise, this is what we see when it pertains to leads. Lizzie Sarah shared similar sentiments in an interview with Entertainment Tonight on Tuesday. She said, I'm sure they have some reason for not picking Johnson, and I'm going to trust in that. 
but at the same time, the system isn't working, giving us a bachelor who is a person of color. So, we need to change the system. Netflix is giving a, uh, fans a first glimpse of its new sci-fi series, Raising Neon. The streaming service released a trailer Wednesday featuring Michael B. John, uh, Jordan, Alicia Rainwright, and Josiah Young. Jordan plays Mark Reese, a late scientist in the show. The character was husband to Nicole, played by Wayne Wright, and father to a young son, Dion, played by Young, before he apparently died in a storm. The previous shows, Nicole, raising Dion following Mark's death. Dion begins to exhibit magical uh, superhero-like abilities, including the ability to manipulate the elements. Raising Dion is based on the Dennis Luke comic book of the same name. The series is written by Carol Barbie and co-stars Jason Ritter and Jasmine Simon. Barbie said in an uh, interview with IGN published last week that she approached Raising Dion as a love letter to moms, to parenting. She says, sometimes the difference between becoming a hero and becoming a villain is how you were raised, how you were loved. No one feels capable of raising a child. You just learn as you go. Nicole has the additional challenge of raising a kid with powers she doesn't have and doesn't understand. She has to keep the unsafety from um, from the world and the world safe from Dion. Raising Dion premieres October 4th on Netflix. Jordan, who starred as Killmonger in the Marvel movie Black Panther, also serves as an executive producer for the new show. Kelly Clarkson had a friendly reunion with the original American Idol judges. The 37-year-old singer hosted Simon Cowell, Paula Abdul, and Randy Jackson during Wednesday's episode of her talk show, The Kelly Clarkson Show. Clarkson beat Justin Guarini to win the first season of American Idol in 2002, which featured Cowell, Abdul, and Jackson. The trio praised Clarkson as a game-changer for the show. Cowell told Clarkson, I actually generally do not believe we would be sitting here today if you had not entered the show. When you delivered that moment on that first live show, and when you sang that winning song at the end, it was a game changer, Abdul said. Abdul Cowan and Jackson served as judges from, for 9, 10, and 13 seasons experientially. Cow expressed his um, desire to make a show with Abdul and Jackson in the future. Cow told Abdul and Jackson, if I had one wish, it would be to make another show with us again. She, uh, he um, added, apart from the fact that we've had so much fun to credit you, Kelly, we wouldn't be here without you. Our legacy generally are the artists, starting with Clarkson, who we discovered over a seven-year period. That's what I'm most proud of. Clarkson released her, her debut studio album, Thankful, um, in July. Fall. Um, following her American Idol wing. She released her eighth studio album, Meaning of Life, in October 2017, and the single Broken and Beautiful for the Ugly Dolls soundtrack in March. Hilary Baldwin revealed Wednesday she's pregnant with her fifth child with Alec Baldwin months after recovering from a miscarriage. The 35-year-old shared a video of her unborn baby's heartbeat in an Instagram post. She captioned the video, It is still very early, but we have learned that there is a little person inside of me. The sound of the strong heart makes me so happy, especially of the loss we experienced in the spring. We want to share this news as we are excited and don't want to hide the pregnancy. Larry Baldwin says the first months have been tough with nausea and exhaustion. She asked for privacy. She wrote, my one request is that the media not send paparazzis to follow me or buy independent paparazzi photos. Hence, encourage me, I want to remain peaceful during this very early time in my pregnancy. And getting chased around by cameras is not in the doctor's orders. The Baldwins have four children since their 2012 marriage including six-year-old Carmen, four-year-old Raphael, 
three-year-old Leonardo and one-year-old Romeo. Alec Baldwin has a previous doubt, uh, daughter, Ireland Baldwin, from his previous marriage to Kim Basinger. In April, Hilaria Baldwin revealed that she had a miscarriage one week after announcing her pregnancy. She said, um, thank you for all your listening, for your support, for your shared learning um, The massage therapist who sued Kevin Spacey for sexual battery has died, according to a new court following. Uh, Spacey's legal team filed a three-page notice of plaintiff's death in the Los Angeles Federal Court on Tuesday, stating that an attorney for the anonymous massage therapist contacted them on September 11th to say he had recently passed away. The notice said no further information or details have been given to Spacey's counsel, but plaintiff's counsel stated that they intended to notify the court with additional information at an appropriate time in the future. The therapist who filed the lawsuit, as John Doe allegedly uh, said, that Spacey forced him to grab his genitals twice during a massage in 2016 at a private resident in Mel. The suit was filed in 2018 and was fit and... Allegedly, that Spacey forced him to grab his genitals twice during a massage in 2016 at a private resident in Malibu. The suit was filed in September 2018 and was allowed to continue in May after Spacey objected that the plaintiff's identity was being concealed. In July, prosecutors in Massachusetts dropped a case against Spacey in which he was accused of sexually assaulting a teen busboy in the Nantucket Bar in 2016. CERN Pinball announced and released on Wednesday a new pinball machine featuring Elvira, Tal Elvira's House of Horrors. The game is available in three versions, which includes a premier edition for $7,999, a limited edition for $9,599, and a special signature edition limited to 50 units globally that customers must contact CERN about regarding price. Elvira's House of Horrors completes the Elvira Pinball Trilogy, which began in 1989 with Elvira and the Party Monsters and 1996 Scare Stiff. House of Horrors centers around Elvira attempting to sell her mansion, which is haunted by campy, scary movie characters from her past. The game also... Um, the game will also feature an HD monitor that will display new Elvira scenes, performed by Elvira actress Cassandra Peterson that were filmed for the top. Players will be sent home, ghouls and monsters back to the films from which they came uh, by hitting at pet, pet walls. Elton John is adding more U.S. shows to his farewell tour. The 72-year-old British singer and songwriter announced in a tweet Monday that he will perform seven shows in New York and New Jersey in April as part of his farewell Yellow Brick Road tour. The post reads, seven new hashtag Elton farewell tour concerts just announced in New York and New Jersey. John will kick off the new round of U.S. shows April 6th at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Tickets go on sale September 27th. Fender plans to raise $3 million for young musicians via a new nonprofit. The company announced the launch of Fender Play Foundation in a, in a press release Wednesday. The new organization will provide resources and music education opportunities to equip, educate, and inspire young people to play music. The Fender Play Foundation intends to raise $3 million for educational institutions and organizations over the next three years. Fender is kicking off its efforts by donating a $1 million. Chris Stapleton, Ariel Levine, Ashley McBride, Panic at the Disco's Brendan Urie, Green Day's Mike Dirnt, and Fall Out Boy's Pete Wentz will serve as ambassadors in 2019-2020. The stars will inspire you to play music through surprise instrument drops, meet and greets, donating signature gear, and memorabilia for auction, gala appearances, and other efforts. Stapleton said in a statement, When I was a kid, I picked up the guitar and found a whole new world at my fingertips. 
I'm proud to partner with the Fender Play Foundation to help kids from all walks of life find a new world of their own. Levine added, providing instruments to schools, camps, and others who don't have access to music on a daily basis is both necessary and inspiring. And I'm looking forward to working alongside my fellow artist advisors to deliver what is sure to be a lifetime of exciting memories. The Fender Play Foundation will work with organizations, educators, and artists to provide equipment donations, personalized instruction, and artist experience to young people. The efforts is inspired by the belief that music empowers self-expression and community building. The Fender Play Foundation has already donated instruments to adapt the arts, Notes for Notes, Muzak, Young Music Foundation, and other organizations. We'll partner with the Boys and Girls Club of Metro Los Angeles Watts Willowbrook Clubhouse to build and launch an interactive space this month. U2 has announced that they will be performing in Mumbai, India for the first time in their careers with the concert set to end their long-running Joshua Tree tour. The Mumbai concert is set to take place on December 15th at the P.Y. Patel Stadium. Tickets go on sale for the general public on October 1st. U2 member The Edge said in a statement, We've been touring around the world with the Joshua Tree and we can't think of a better place to celebrate the end of this tour. Mumbai, India, we're coming for you. I hope you're ready. The Joshua Tree Tour, which first began in 2017, <coughs> is a celebration of the band's seminal 1987 album of the same name. You 2 will also be performing in Melbourne, Sydney, and Tokyo starting in November, and for the first time ever in Singapore on November 30th and December 1st, in Seoul on December 8th, and Manila, Philippines on December 11th. Taylor Swift is giving the context behind her highly publicized 2016 feud with Kanye West. The 29-year-old singer said in an interview with Rolling Stones published Wednesday that Wes's two-faced nature played a major role in her conflict and the infamous phone call with the rapper. Swift and Wes clashed in 2016 after Wes referenced Swift in his song Famous. Swift denied her she approved the lyrics, leading Wes's wife, Kim Kardashian, to release a secret recording of a phone call Wes and Swift had about the song. Swift says the world didn't understand the contents and the events that led up to it. Because nothing ever just happens like that without some lead up. Some events took place that caused me to be um, standoffish when Wes called me a bitch. That was not just a singular event. Swift and Wes's feud initially began in 2009 after Wes interrupted Swift's speech at the MTV Video Music Awards. Swift recalled how she sought Wes's approval after the incident and was thrilled when the rapper was friendly. The star said, I started to feel like we reconnected, which felt great for me, because all I ever wanted my whole career after that thing happened in 2009 was for him to respect me. She explained, and so we'd go to dinner and stuff, and I was so happy because he would say really nice things about my music. It just felt like I was healing some childhood rejection or something for when I was 19. Swift was therefore flattered when West called her ahead of the 2015 MTV VMAs to ask that she would present him with the Video Vanguard Award at the ceremony. The singer recalled, he can be the sweetest, and I was so stoked that he asked me that. And she said, and so I wrote the speech up, and then we get to the VMAs, and I make this speech, and he screams, MTV got Taylor Swift up here to present me this award for ratings. I realized he is so two-faced. Swift said Wes sent her flowers to the, apologize the day after the 2015 VMAs. She believed they were back on good terms when Wes called to discuss his song Famous. Star recall, and then when I heard the song, I was like, I'm done with this. If you want to be on bad terms, let's be on bad terms, but just be real about it. So it previously said in the September issue of Vogue that the backlash she faced after Kardashian released the phone call with Wes was an isolating and humiliating experience. She says, a mass public shaming with millions of people saying you are quote unquote canceled is a very isolating experience. I don't think there are that many people who can actually understand what it's like to have millions of people hate you very loudly. So it released her seventh studio album Lover in August and will promote the record on a new tour. She will also serve as a mega mentor in The Voice of Season 17. British singer Liam Payne is back with new music. The 26-year-old recording artist released Stack It Up, a new song featuring American rapper A Booty With A Hoodie, uh, a Boogie with a hoodie on Tuesday. Payne shared a clip of the single on Twitter and celebrated the song's release in the caption. He wrote, it's finally here, hashtag Stack It Up, featuring 
A Boogie with a Hoodie, and Artist HBTL is available everywhere now. It feels good to share new music with you. Payne had teased the song's music video on Sunday. Second up is Payne's first new single since Polaroid with Jonas Blue and Lennon Stella, which debuted in October 2018. Payne discussed writing second up lyrics with Ed Sheeran Wednesday on the Kiss Breakfast show. Payne says, We changed a couple of things about the song because the song, in a sense, is kind of one-dimensional in a way. In that, it's, it's about making money. It's better to make money with or for someone to share with someone. Payne came to fame with the boy band One Direction, which has been on an indefinite hiatus since 2015. He released his debut solo album first time in August 2018. Pink will be the first female solo artist to receive the Billboard's Legends of Live Award. Billboard announced Wednesday that Pink will accept the honor at the 2019 Billboard Live Music Summit and Awards, which takes place November 5th and 6th in Beverly Hills, California. The Legend of Live Awards recognizes achievements in touring and live performance. Elton John, Ozzy Osbourne, Rush, Journey, Neil Diamond, Lionel Richie, and Bon Jovi were among the previous recipients. Pink completed her Beautiful Trauma World Tour in August. The tour sold over 3 million tickets and grossed $397.3 million, the 10th highest grossing tour in Billboard's box score history. Um, Dave Brooks, uh, the Billboard Senior Director of Live and Touring, said in statement, between her mesmerizing live performances, her high-flying visual acrobats, and her incredible catalogs of music that includes 32 singles on the Billboard Hot 100 and three Billboard No. 1 albums, there's no artist more deserving of this award than Pink. Her beautiful trauma tour is a historic feat of endurance and artistic excellence, and we're honored that she will be joining us in Beverly Hills to celebrate this record-breaking achievement. Pink will attend the summit with Udi and the Blowfish, the Mouse, and other artists. The event features panels, artist interviews, and executive Q&As with people in music, comedy, and live entertainment. Pink will perform shows October 5th in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and November 2nd in Austin, Texas. She'll release her eighth studio album, Hurt to Be Human, in April. And here are the top 10 songs on the Billboard Hot 100 serial charts for the week of September 21st. Number 10, Post Malone Swallow with Sunflower. Number 9, Louis Capaldi with Someone You Love. Number 8, Post Malone with Take What You Want. Number 7, Chris Brown featuring Drake with No Guidance. Number 6, Lil Tecca with Ransom. Number 5, Billy Idish with Bad Guy. Number 4, Post Malone with Circles. Number 3, Post Malone featuring Yathung with Goodbyes. Number 2, Shawn Mendes and Camille Cabello with Senorita. And the number 1 song on the Billboard Hot 100 Shield Charts for the week of September 21st, Lizzo with Truth Hurts. And that is your entertainment report for Thursday, September 19th, 2019. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report Anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.